I'm outside to do the midweek shopping. It's a fairly decent afternoon, after local standards. I only have to wear a jacket to keep warm, and the sky is more blue than gray. On the way to the local store, I pass the old rusty railway line. We hardly get much traffic these days, but it's a reminder from our days as frontiers. I get lost in my trail of thought, and am quickly brought back to reality by the loud ringing of the roadside bell. Apparently, we'll have a train coming. The gates slide down to keep the average daredevil or busybody off the tracks. I have plenty of time. Getting a few extra gulps of fresh air and earfuls of bird chirping doesn't hurt anybody. Then again, I wonder if you could weaponize bird chirps or air. Actually, air can be pretty lethal when sped up. Luckily, my thoughts are once again abrupt by a pimple on the soundscape. From what I can make out of the rugged dark speck on the horizon, and more than anything else, the racket of the prehistoric fossil engine, the train. I, and a small crowd by now, have been waiting for what should be passing any time. Actually, the damn thing seems to be louder than anything around here. I pass a joke about the state of our country's railway service to the person beside me, whom I have, until now, shared a great relationship of trying to ignore each other with. He just gives me that look. I guess that is as close as we'll get. But the overpowering roar of the train continues rising. There no longer is any bird chirps or murmuring. I catch myself clenching my fist until it turns white, in an attempt to focus on something else. At this point, it is all there is within my head. The sound of wheels punishing the old rails. And then it hits me. It's only going to get louder. I want to move away. I don't care about shopping anymore, but I'm just standing there fixated by the approach of the heaving, bellowing monstrosity. The scream of metal against metal grows louder and louder. I can feel myself trembling, hands clasping my ears. I grimace as I try to muster all the power within me to distract myself from this sensation. There I stand rigid, teeth and eyes forced shut as possible, in a sea of people unnoticing, uncaring, unhelping. As the train is only meters away, I fall to my knees, my trembling legs unable to support my weight anymore. I open my mouth to let out a scream, only to be drowned in the tsunami of noise. Then it's over. It has passed. The noise is getting weaker. The gates open again, and people cross the railway. I am left on my knees, breathing heavily, terrified by the thought of what an everyday encounter has done to me.